Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use NSD faults in your applications. Now, I already have my app well, project set up. It's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it NSD faults for the purpose of this tutorial. Now, basically what NSD faults is is like a kind of like a saving function where you can save certain stuff in your app and then have it load up when you reload the game such as like um, when you're playing games and it just kind of continues from where you last left off or even you know simple stuff like saving data and then loading it back up when the user requires it so what we're going to be doing is basically saving creating a label and a button we're going to simply have the label display text and then when we press the button to create the save we're going to build and run the application once more and then because we saved it the label should display different text so what I'm going to do is basically go straight to the viewcontrol.xib import our label in there just drag it out nicely center it I'm also going to have a round rack button space it out so it's looking pretty nice and this will be save there we go so what I'll do then is just simply bring up the assistant editor. I'm going to create the outlet now by simply right click or control click and drag. Let's see if we name the label label. And the same for the button, but this time create an action for it. And I simply name it save button. Give that simple action of touch up inside. Now I close down the um, assistant editor. Now we've created the um, interface and linked up the um, actions and outlets we can jump straight into our view controller.m now just above the import for our view controller there we do hash define and then the marker here we just simply do a k underscore simply name it save space asterisk quotation mark quota, um, at symbol sorry quotation mark quotation mark and now a semicolon and I'll simply put in the two quotation marks here um, just simply name it save there Okay, so what we're going to do is simply um, create kind of like an if statement. So if the application has been saved, display this text, else if it hasn't been saved, display this text kind of thing. So what we're going to do is use ns user defaults space asterisk saved app, simply name it there, space equals space bracket ns um, user defaults once more, space standard user defaults and error bracket in a semicolon. We hit enter, then we do boom, space, save, well, we'll simply name it saved, um, sorry, space equals space bracket, saved app, which we named our um, default uh, space ball for key. And then the ball for key here, we do the name of our defined kind of little key up here. So we do k underscore save and array bracket semicolon. Now we can create our if statement. So, oh, I can see an error at the top there, sorry. Just get rid of the semicolon. There's no semicolon needed at the end there. That was my fault there. So now we can create our if statement. So it's basically if in the condition, we do simply save there, our name of our ball there. No, exclamation mark, sorry. And then in the statements here, if I just comment it, so not saved, and then space else. I'll just run through this in a second. Um, bracket enter and then code saved. Okay, then so basically, so we do our if statement here. So, in the code, in our first little section bracket here, will be the code to display when the application has not been saved, and then else here we um, put the code that we want to um, have displayed when the app ha um, more when the defaults have been saved. So, what we'll simply do is we do label dot text I've spaced it out so you can clearly see it that symbol quotation um sorry um, dot text equals space quotation um, add symbol quotation mark quotation mark and have a semicolon and here app has not been saved now we'll just copy that app has been saved okay and so basically once we load the application up, it's going to find our key there, and if it's been if it hasn't been saved, it will display our text here. App has not been um, saved, 
else, if it has been saved, it will display our text app has been saved. Now to get it to save, we need to place the code in our button. And so every time we hit our button, it will create that kind of save point. So we do um, capital NS user default space asterisk saved app as we called it space equals space bracket NS user defaults again space standard user default and error bracket semicolon bracket error saved app set ball in the ball here we do true all in capitals and then for key uh, again, k underscore save and then bracket semicolon. Press enter, a new bracket, saved app, and then make sure we synchronize it. And that red bracket and a semicolon. So then, uh, once I hit the button, create that save file. So, and then next time we load up the application, because it's been saved, it was saved for text. Now, because we haven't, this is the first time we're building the money and we haven't saved it, our label, if you've seen the um, interface builder here, this says label at the minute. Well, it should display ha um, app has not been saved as we haven't saved it yet. So we go to build and run. Now you see when it loads up, in, app has not been saved. So we can probably simply press save. Now if we stop it and then close the simulator, go to build and run once more. Now this time we'll have a different outcome. See, this time we know we load it up because we have saved it. It's now saying app has been saved. So we simply you know you did load loading up our little save function there. So that's simply how you use NS user defaults in your applications. So I hope this helps in your apps or projects at the moment where you can save features and have them load up when the user customizes something they did. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like and favorite the video so you have it for future reference. Make sure you like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And check out all our apps just by simply searching Geek Element on the App Store. But most importantly, subscribe and I'll see you all next time. In our Thank you for watching this tutorial by Geeky Lemon Development. Be sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook. Oh, and check out all of their other tutorials and sample projects on their website, geekylemon.com. But most importantly, please download their awesome iPhone and iPad apps by searching Geeky Lemon on the App Store. And please remember to subscribe.